It's the first competitive meeting between Manchester United and Barcelona since the 2011 Champions League final. It's the first quarter final for five years for Manchester United in the Champions League. They're obviously going to be up for it after the way that they got rid of PSG in the last round. <laughs> got rid? Well, you could argue that in the first leg they got lucky. Um, and in the second leg there was a lot of dominance by PSG and I just think it's, as much as it was about Manchester United, it was about the deficiencies of PSG. Let's put that aside. They made it through and credit to them. Now they're running into a whole different category, into a whole different animal. And, and to be able to get past Barcelona, you're going to have to do a lot of things very, very well. You're going to have to defend well. You're going to have to embrace the fact that you're not going to be uh, touching the ball very often. So when you do touch the ball, you got to make it count. So when you do force turnovers, you have to expose the deficiencies of Barcelona in transition defensively in 1v1 situations. So, you win the ball in a good area, you put it behind uh, Gerard Pique and you have Marcus Rashford get after it and see if you can create a, uh, a situation where those 1v1 situations are exposed and you can utilize the talent and the uh, physical ability of guys like Rashford and Martial and Lingard. Average teams in La Liga at times this year against Barcelona, they have caused problems for Barcelona. In the end, Barcelona ends up winning the games, but they have caused problems where Ter Stegen has have had to come up with save after save in those uh, counter-attack opportunities. I think Manchester United can do that, but in order to do that, you cannot just sit back and be 80 yards away from goal, because even if you force a turnover, you still got to go 80 yards. Your line of confrontation has to be somewhere where you can force turnovers in the midfield and from there go and attack and maybe that gives you an opportunity. Easier said than done because you're not going to see a whole lot of the ball. Do you think formation will be important for United? Because they switched their formations mm. between the legs against PSG and it worked out better when they went, I guess, more 4-4-2 with, with Fred in central midfield away from home. At home, what do you think Solskjaer's outlook will be from the start? It's tricky because you want to remain aggressive so that, as I said, you force those turnovers in areas in the midfield. But if you do that and you don't actually force those turnovers and you get a little stretch, Barcelona is going to pass through you. That, that's how good they are. And if you leave Barcelona with time and space and Lionel Messi on the ball, he's going to hurt you and they're going to hurt you. And so it's tricky because you want to defend well but not too deep. You, you have to be able to say, you know what, look, if they're going to beat us in behind with speed, then go ahead and do that. Because I don't, think, I don't think they have that kind of speed to get behind us. So maybe we get our lines a little further forward. Maybe our line of confrontation is right there in the, in the middle third. And we start forcing balls into areas where we can get numbers around the ball and go defend and force those turnovers. But when you turn it around to the other side, you say to Barcelona, okay, well, they're going to come af after you we're good enough to pass through you. And yep. when we're good enough to pass through you, now there is no recovering. Now there are no numbers behind the balls, and now is when Messi really kills you. Barcelona, they, they've got stuck at this stage four of the last five years in mm. quarterfinals, but they've got the Copa del Rey is not going to happen until the end of the season. Mm. They've got a 10-point lead in La Liga. They really can approach this game aggressively, can't they, away from home in the first leg? They can go looking for that away goal. Do you, do you expect them to really be on the front foot? Yeah. I, I, Barcelona is one of the few teams in the world that do not adjust to what the other teams are doing. They're going to play their game. They're going to get on the field and say, this is us. We're better than you, and we're going to prove it to you. And if you give us time and space, we're going to kill you. And they don't change for anybody. That's the way they play. That's their personality. So I expect them to, yes, to get after Manchester United. And don't forget, they, in theory, they would have had a tough matchup against Atletico Madrid in the weekend leading up to this. But Diego Costa decided to go and remind the referee about his mother and so got himself thrown out. And Barcelona played the, the remaining of that game a man up, which meant that now it was like a training session. They're just moving the ball around. So whatever uh, physicality and whatever energy they were going to spend in that game, it didn't happen. I think it's a team that is going to be rested, that is going to feel, be feeling good about themselves, that have a lead, as you just mentioned, in La Liga. They're going to get after Manchester United, and it's going to be up to Manchester United to be ready to embrace the struggle of having to defend with a lot of numbers behind the ball and not a whole lot of contact with the ball. Got a prediction? For the game or for the series? For the game. Barcelona 2, Manchester United 1. All right. 
Well, of course, uh, Manchester United won the Champions League final in Camp Nou 2-1 against Bayern Munich 20 years ago. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the hero, and now he's going to try and steer away past the Blaugrana into the semi-finals. We'll see if he can do it. First leg coming up. ESPN FC is your home for the Champions League.